Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the good folks at uh, the Alliance for giving me the opportunity to participate in today's meeting. Almost a year ago, Congress passed the 21st Century Cures Act. And it was passed with bipartisan support, strong bipartisan support in both houses of Congress, and then signed by President Obama on December 13th. Now, one section of that act, section 3033, provides a definition of regenerative medicine therapy. It includes cell therapy, tissue engineered products, cell and tissue products, combination products. And let me say that this is not a, a definition of regenerative medicine. It's just a definition of regenerative medicine therapy for the purposes of the, of the act. One issue that has come up is whether or not gene therapies are included under this uh, definition. And the FDA's uh, working position is that this will include uh, some gene therapies, not necessarily all gene therapies, but will include some gene therapies. Uh, for example, it certainly includes the uh, CAR T products, the genetically modified cells. Those are the cell, genetically modified cells. We consider those a gene therapy, but they're kind of a cell therapy too, so those are included. We're also including some gene therapies that we think of as having a regenerative activity, having a longer duration of activity. Section 3033 also created Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy Designation, or RMAT designation. And this is a special expedited program for regenerative medicine therapies. In order for a product to qualify for this designation, first of all, it has to be a regenerative medicine therapy. It has to meet the definition that I showed a moment ago. It has to be intended to treat a bad disease, something that is serious or life-threatening. And there has to be preliminary clinical evidence, emphasis on clinical, because not all of our expedited programs require clinical evidence. But, but Congress said here there has to be preliminary clinical evidence that the drug has the potential to address an unmet need for that bad disease. So what do you get if you get RMAT designation for your product? You get increased interactions with FDA to expedite development. And 21st Century Cures Act says specifically that you get the same benefits as if you had breakthrough designation. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with it, breakthrough designation has been an expedited program that uh, we've had for since 2012. And it's been very popular. The, it's, it's a little different from RMAT designation, but the benefits uh, have been extremely popular and so uh, many uh, sponsors would like to get it. Uh, but 21st Century Cures says that RMATs get these same benefits of talking to the FDA. In addition to those same benefits of breakthrough designation, such as early discussions of potential surrogate or intermediate endpoints, there are other benefits. All of these products, breakthrough or RMAT, are eligible for a priority approval, priority review, priority review. They're also elevated, eligible for accelerated approval. And accelerated approval in the U.S. means approval based on a surrogate endpoint or an intermediate 
clinical endpoint. Normally, in drug development, we like to think that the development program is going to show an effect on something that is clinically meaningful, something that matters to patients. Accelerated approval says that uh, we can approve products based on a surrogate endpoint, something that in itself might not be clinically meaningful, but that is reasonably likely to predict an effect that's clinically meaningful. In 21st century cures for RMAT designation, they have extended the uh, criteria for accelerated approval or the benefit of accelerated approval in saying that not just does it allow approval based on a surrogate or intermediate clinical endpoint, but also you could get accelerated approval based on data from a meaningful number of sites with post-approval expansion to a larger number of sites to confirm the benefit. Now, we're still working out what exactly meaningful number of sites means. If a product gets, if an RMAT product gets accelerated approval, then the post-approval requirements, the post-approval confirmatory data could come from clinical studies, could come from registries or real world evidence. It's important that the sponsor talk with the FDA throughout drug development to get an idea of what surrogate endpoints will be useful and what sort of post-marketing requirements are going to be required, what sort of data would be appropriate for their specific product. This figure shows our current experience through uh, October 1st with requests for RMAT designation. And the red balls represent uh, requests that were denied. The yellow ball represents, it just, there's just one yellow ball, but, but several requests that are pending. And then each green ball represents a request that has been granted. And uh, for those of you who are trying to count them, there are 17 red balls and nine green balls. <laughs> so it's, it's about one in three have been granted. And uh, I think that that's a, a reasonable pace. Now, I, I wanted to go through some of the reasons that we have turned down requests, why requests have been denied. Uh, in some cases, it's been for administrative reasons. The IND was inactive, or the, the sponsor didn't submit any preliminary clinical evidence. Now, I will say, if we can go back, there we go. If you look at the, the far left, those first three balls on the, first three red balls on the left, and, and there's a little cluster there, that's where most of the administrative problems were. When we first got the law passed and the designation existed, Folks came in not really knowing what they had to submit. And so most of the administrative denials were, were right there at the beginning. We're, we're not having that problem so much anymore. CMC reasons. Sometimes a sponsor comes to us and they've got preliminary clinical evidence, but they've figured out how to change and improve their product. And they've changed their product so much that we think it's a different product that they want the designation for 
compared to the product that they have the evidence for. So we're requiring that the evidence be with the same product that you want the designation for. You can't, you can't switch the product and, and get the designation based on a, a different product. The most common reason that we deny these requests is for clinical evidence issues. Sometimes it's a study design issue. Sometimes it's a single arm study with no concurrent control and in the absence of, an un of concurrent control, we have difficulty interpreting the data. Now there's some diseases where you could still control the, uh, interpret the data. And there's sometimes when the effect is so large that a single arm study with natural history data might be sufficient. But, but sometimes we do need a concurrent control in order to feel comfortable interpreting the data. Another reason is that there may be inconsistent results. So in these early studies, uh, folks often look at a long list of outcome measures. And they'll come in and, and one outcome measure looks like their product is, is having a benefit. And you look at the next outcome measure and it looks like their product isn't doing anything at all. And you look at the next outcome measure and it looks like their product is hurting people. And we look at that and we, we, we don't know what to make of that. So inconsistent results have been an issue. I want to, a few slides here on how to reach us, uh, particularly, uh, oh, I, I need to acknowledge uh, my, my Deputy Office Director, Dr. Anatol, uh, Associate Director, Kimberly Benton, and, and Dr. Xiaofei Wang, who, who is our uh, RMAT guru in our office. And this is how to reach me. Uh, so we need to get past that slide um, <laughs> and, and say that we're, uh, we have, uh, we're always interested in working with stakeholders and, and have appreciated uh, the opportunity, as I said, to, to be here today and, and to work with the Alliance and uh, hope that we can continue that collaboration and we will continue to uh, listen to our stakeholders uh, this is a rapidly evolving field and uh, regulations uh, change slowly, but we are committed to evolving as the field evolves. So uh, I'll stop there and turn it back over to uh, Michael Warner.